Oh, okay, yeah. We're not going to start streaming yet. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Friday Presentation Seminar. We're not going to go online yet because I'd like to have everybody, uh, I'd like to have everybody quickly introduce themselves before we go online. So that uh, our speaker, who I'll introduce in a moment, is uh, in the audience. So why don't we start with Emily? Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. Or I can do it if you want. So, so I think we're going to go online here in a second. All right. Well, good afternoon and welcome to the Friday Transportation Seminar. And I'm very pleased, uh, without much ado, to introduce Bob DeConing from Routeware. And he's going to be speaking today about top trends in tracking and communications, the 21st century technology today. And uh, we're very pleased to have Bob here today with us um, at the seminar. So welcome, everyone. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Rob. Well, good afternoon. It's a real uh, pleasure for me to be here. Also with me is Ed Arib, who is my uh, Vice President of Advanced uh, Products uh, at Routeware. Uh, just very quickly, Routeware is a technology company located uh, right next to the Nike campus in Beaverton, 10-year-old company. Uh, and our vision for the company is to be the number one technology provider for the waste industry. And so we'll get into a, a more of that in just a little bit. But just quickly, a show of hands. Um, how many people here in the room have um, probably really given any real serious thought to the, uh, the waste hauler that picks up either your, um, your garbage weekly or your recycling or the container out near your... So a few hands. Okay. Good. So have you thought uh, much about the pain that that, uh, that that driver might have in that truck or that that waste hauler might have in general? What pain is an organization they might feel? Well, part of the pain that they have, if you were to really uh, drill down on it, um, is those drivers will print off for that morning on the route that you're on a route sheet. And paper and pencil based right there in the cab of the truck, and he's going through his routes, and he's trying to record during the day things like extra bags out, extra recycling out, skips or misses, your driveway's blocked, you didn't put your can out in time. There's activity going on trying to, to, to capture the customer activity throughout the day while all the time driving his route, trying to safely navigate through traffic uh, and basketball hoops and other things in the neighborhoods and kids and the like, and get this, this truck around uh, this route and the paper is a problem because a lot of these drivers aren't really well educated, it's hard to read the writing, they capture the information, they bring it back to the yard at night and now they've got to do data entry to capture that data throughout the day, load it in and then create the billing and the accounting and everything involved with that customer activity fraught with errors, very paper based uh, and, and very time intensive. Also, these, these waste haulers have problems with their fleets of trucks and the drivers. Uh, the driver activity is obviously an issue. Uh, they may have a, a fleet of trucks, 
And think about it for a moment. Each one of these trucks is worth about $300,000. And so now you've got a $300,000 asset driving around throughout the day, and you have no visibility as to what that, that truck is doing or what that driver is doing until the end of that day, and all kinds of things happen. You get customer complaints. The residents, you didn't pick up my can in time, and things happen throughout the day. So how do you logistically manage those operations, the pain that they have, uh, manage a fleet of trucks of, and, and, and a whole cadre of drivers throughout the day and manage all that data that has to be collected and do it and, and run your business in a, in a timely way, an efficient way. And um, quite frankly, it hasn't been done well, and the technologies to serve that industry have not really existed, and that's why Routeware came to be. Uh, started 10 years ago by a waste hauler here in Oregon City that wanted to automate electronically the paperwork in the cab of the truck and make it seamless from the driver activity and the customer activity right back in through the accounting and billing systems so you have the seamless capture of data of what happens throughout that day. So Routeware as a technology came, uh, company came into being to try and solve that pain uh, in the marketplace and uh, we serve uh, uh, waste haulers throughout the US and Canada and uh, so what I'm going to do is take you through some of the technologies and some of the trends that we see uh, in the industry to help uh, solve some of that pain we just talked about. So that's kind of a, a bit of a backdrop. The good news story here I think is the waste industry in general is a feel-good story in today's tough economic climate. Uh, number one, I mean, it, it really is on the forefront, the, the first line of defense in the environment issues, the sustainability issues and the like, and we can talk about that if, you, if you'd like to. But it's a feel-good in terms of what we're doing with sustainability in, in, in municipalities today. And secondly, um, it's, it's a great situation from the economy standpoint. The, the, the solid waste industry is projected to grow 37% from 2007 to 2011. And that's with any thought of recession or depression in front of us. You think about it, the waste industry is really utility. And so these are long-term contracts that they have. You're going to cut back a lot of services and purchases before you cut back on your water and your electric and your waste bills. Uh, and the nice thing about it from a, a, a routeware perspective, a from our standpoint, is we're selling into that industry. Uh, these haulers are still, they've got good operating cash flows. They're going to be in business, and we've not seen any fall off in sales. In fact, our sales have actually gone up uh, over the last uh, four months pretty aggressively. So, so it's a growing industry. Uh, it won't be affected much by the economy that we're in right now. It's a $50 billion industry. And to put some, uh, some macro-level numbers in place for you, the fleet of trucks that service the waste industry in this country is, is over 156,000 trucks. It's one of the largest fleets uh, that we have in this country. And so to service that fleet, uh, those, that, that size of number nationwide is a huge opportunity uh, for us. Out of that 156,000 trucks, only about 3,000 of those trucks actually have onboard computers on those trucks. And so there's a huge opportunity uh, from our standpoint. Out of those 3,000, we probably have 2,000 of the 3,000 nationwide. Uh, there, are, there are probably thousands of trucks that do have some form of GPS uh, tracking which is a lower end uh, technology use. But even that, there are just a lot of trucks out there that just, there, there, there's no visibility as to what happens to that truck throughout the day by management. So there's a huge upside, and this is an industry um, uh, really uh, waiting to be served. So I'm gonna talk about four major uh, trends uh, this afternoon, and then I've got like a three or four minute video that I'll take you through that was filmed out at Hillsborough Disposal, just to kind of bring home some of the technologies into a real-world uh, setting for you. So I'm hoping to, to cover that in the next 30 minutes or so, and then we'll have plenty of time for questions. But if you have questions along the way, uh, feel free to interrupt at any time. <coughs> Thoughts, questions, or anything else before I get started? Go ahead. Just a reminder, when you do have a question, please use the microphone in front of you on the table. Press the button that says press and hold it, or I have a uh, Oprah style or... <laughs> Okay. Yes, sir. I have a question about the growth. Why is it growing so much? I can see a shift from 
ways to recycling, but why is it growing so much? Well, as population, let's face it, we're a consumer-based society, and and and, and we we consume goods and, and services, and uh, certainly some of that may retract a little bit uh, with the economy the way it is now. But we still tend to throw out a lot of what we buy, and and it, I think we're trying to convert a lot of it into recycling so that it's it doesn't go into the landfills, and that, that there's certainly a major trend that way. But they're still throwing things out in the popular base, population base still grows and uh, there will be economic activity around that. It just, it's just inevitable as we go forward. So, now the, the recycling trend is a good trend for sustainability. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, are you a uh, local company or are you national? Where do you have a presence? Yeah, our corporate headquarters is in Beaverton, Oregon, uh, right near the Nike headquarters uh, out in Beaverton. Uh, and, but we serve uh, the total United States and Canada. We actually uh, have um, more customers, about three times more customers in Texas than we actually have in Oregon. Um, so we, and, and there's reasons for that. Uh, in the Midwest and on the East Coast, the waste industry is quite competitive. And so haulers can, can bid um, for residential neighborhoods and commercial um, uh, routes and the like. Whereas here on the West Coast, they tend to be franchise-based, and so haulers will have contracted with the city, with the municipalities, for, uh, for their, their, their space. And they generally have that space locked up, for the most part, uh, with those contracts for long periods of time. So when it's franchise-based, they're not as motivated to bring on new technologies to compete against, uh, say, a waste management or somebody big coming in. So we still, we still offer operating efficiencies uh, for those franchise companies, but where it's more competitive, that's where our, our technologies can give somebody an unfair competitive advantage in the marketplace. Because as I'll summarize here, the big haulers like Waste Management and others are bringing these technologies into the cab of the truck, into their back op office operations, and trying to create that unfair uh, technology advantage and if these smaller haulers or local municipalities don't try and compete, they will be left behind or be at, a, at an unfair advantage. So, um, so it's just the kind of the way that the countries uh, divide out. Now, Europe is a whole different environment altogether, and uh, they have a lot of other issues. They're actually further ahead of us on the waste collection side and the technologies, and we are probably a good, we think, Justin, a good five to eight years or more ahead of us in the technologies. And so we're really lagging behind the Europeans to great. But they've got issues that we haven't had, like lack of land. So where we have landfills and we can fill them up and have, land's pretty precious there. And so getting back to recycling and cutting back on some of that is really important. Yes, ma'am. Yep, absolutely. First of all, you make a very good distinction. There are waste haulers that are that are private and commercial in the way that, that they conduct their business. And then there are some municipalities that have their own fleet of, of waste trucks. They've not they've not outsourced it to a private hauler. And so so we, we offer these technologies are both for private and commercial haulers as well as municipalities. We actually see a, a, a major growing trend for our business with municipalities. They're becoming, they know that they have to compete now with private haulers and get more efficient. They need to be able to reduce their costs because the public won't, uh, you know, fund uh, some some of that operation as much anymore. And so, so municipalities are growing. And the other thing municipalities are really pushing, we're, we're seeing, is, uh, is RFID technologies, so radio radio frequency ID. So getting absolute 100% service verification to your household for billing purposes is something that municipalities are really uh, seem to be pushing. It's more expensive technology, but they want to make sure they get it right with your residents. They don't, city council members don't like getting complaints uh, from their constituents. And so service becomes a real issue for municipalities, and the technologies can help them 
do a better job with customer service. So we'll, we'll get into that a little bit. So there's some issues around it. Also around safety is also a concern, obviously, and, and the technology has helped with that as well going forward. So I don't know if I answered your question totally, but we can certainly explore it more later. Okay, well, let me dive into the presentation uh, and go through that, and that will generate more questions as we go through. And it's really more of a generic uh, technology overview uh, than anything else. So, so we kind of went through an introduction a little bit, but, but you know, there's, there's been an adoption of technologies in other areas of the transportation sector. So when you, when you look out, certainly the long-haul trucking companies have been served by Qualcomm and others over the years in terms of communicating with trucks and, and the like. Obviously, UPS and FedEx and all those logistics-based trucks have had onboard technologies for a long time and has served them really well. But, but so the technology has been out there. But for some reason, some reason the waste industry has really been uh, resistant towards bringing some of the technologies. Part of it is we've had to uh, play a little catch up with some of the complexities of what we offer to that industry. But uh, we see some of these technologies really starting to accelerate now going forward. They, they're, they're still back before the year 2000, what is offered, and, and we need to catch them up. Uh, so, and what can technology do for them? Well, if right now when they price uh, picking up a container or a dumpster or something like that, they really don't know what their absolute cost is to, to make that pickup. And so if we could give them visibility on what their costs are, they would know better how to price it competitively in a competitive market. And so technologies can help them with pricing to make sure that, that when they do, they win and they're profitable with the pricing. Providing outstanding customer service. We talked about that. Uh, you know, it's real important, again, for municipalities and the like to provide good customer service or if you're in a competitive environment, having customer service so that you're not going to switch to a waste management because you don't like what your local hauler is doing. Uh, this will become more important going forward. And, of course, they're looking for ways to drive additional revenues. So if, if that driver is able to capture the fact that you've put an extra bag out or you've put your Christmas tree out or something like that, if they now have the ability to capture that and bill you for it, the amount of billing for the extras will more than pay for the technologies that we offer. So... Um, so revenue new revenue opportunities for haulers is certainly an opportunity and certainly improving their, uh, their margins, operating margins, and then ultimately building uh, their shareholder value is important. Now, there was a study done by the Aberdeen Group uh, a few years ago in, the, in this area, and this was more not for waste fleets but just general transportation fleets. Uh, the study revealed that the top five reasons for bringing technology on was number one to improve customer satisfaction and retention. That seventy percent uh, uh, rating on that question. To maintain or enhance their competitive position in the marketplace. To meet customer mandates for better service and delivery. Fourth was to improve their own operating margins and, and operating efficiencies. And last was to improve cash flow. So to bring technology on the fleet operators, this is what the Aberdeen Group found. And they saw that there were also major trends going towards safety and sustainability uh, as part of these fleet operations as well, that this will become dramatically more important in the lives going forward. Yes? So can you also, make, with this technology, does it give you the ability to report to places like the or local communities where interested in knowing what their Right. Um, well, would because we capture the data, and and so we bring it back into a server and have our own database, and so that information is available. And so, to the extent that you can take that data, and and create custom reports or whatever, and then export it to the DEQ or others if they were interested, uh, would be a possibility. So, uh, if city or others wanted that information, or needed that information, it's certainly available. Um, uh, the, the, anything that's captured at the customer site would be available. There is, there's other data collection sites at the landfill or at the transfer stations and other places in the recyclables that might have to be captured uh, a different way. But, but we can capture at the residential or commercial level what happens. So the first trend that I would share with you is what I call the 21st century smart truck concept. 
And again, if you have a $300,000 asset that's, that's driving around, that's revenue producing for you, why wouldn't you want to maximize that asset? So what we've developed, first and foremost, is the onboard computing that's involved, because that's where the data gets collected, is into this centralized hub, so to speak. And then going around the truck, uh, we can tie right into the data bus of the truck with our uh, fleet maintenance modems. So we can capture uh, uh, the data of the truck as it's, as it's being driven. You can tie in the backup cameras for safety purposes so the driver can see right on the computer screen what's behind them. Uh, so the, Lexus isn't the only one that uh, offers a product like that. So these, for these trucks, and you can just imagine trying to back up one of these things, uh, that's very important. Digital cameras. We allow the driver now to have digital cameras and to be able to take pictures of customer activity, whether you put your cans out or not, whether your driveway was blocked or not. Uh, if you have overflowing containers, take a digital picture, and then for customer service purposes, and I'll go into it in more detail, uh, give, give that customer service rep real-time data in which to, uh, to deal with you when you call on the phone and say, why wasn't my can picked up? So uh, digital pictures, the real-time data transmission, through uh, cellular uh, data, the RFID technologies that allows for asset tracking of containers and, and, uh, and repair management of these containers and the like. But uh, to get 100% service verification for commercial purposes is available. And then scales, so the ability to weigh uh, how much recyclables you have at curbside or the like is, is our, our, our marketing programs that are being developed that we can talk about in a little bit. Um, but scales is real important in terms of weighing how much is being, um, is being emptied in the landfill. And so some of that data that the DEQ or others may want to know about is here. And we can track, we can track the data by SIC code. So, so would, would, would the waste coming from a bank with mostly paper recyclables be different than the waste coming from a Chinese restaurant and so if you'd want to track that and the weight of it and the like by SIC code, that's all possible as well. SIC yes, sir. Yeah, it's uh, the, um, uh, I don't know what S stands for, but the industry code. But it, it breaks down different industry um, segments for tracking purposes. So banking versus retail versus, and, and it goes in a pretty detailed way. So, yes, sir. We can, we can retrofit them back into older trucks as well, as long as we can tie right into the battery and it's got power. So we can, we can retrofit them into a truck that's 20 years old if, if necessary. But obviously, it's a lot easier to install them in new trucks uh, that haven't already been to the landfill. It's easier crawling underneath the truck that's new than, than used. But, uh, so yeah, this, we can go backwards in time. But the main thing is trying to take advantage of the technologies around that truck to make it more more efficient. So kind of breaking down some of these trends into more detail, the first, like I said, is the installation of the onboard computer. So it, GPS technology is nice. It's a really cool toy. Those of you got a Garmin system or whatever, okay, it's pretty prevalent now. Uh, and, and so for management, just wanting to know on dots on a map where their fleet is, okay, that's pretty cool. But that lasts about three or four months, and then some of that coolness wears off. Because after you start tracking the truck, what do you do with it after that? So the key is, and where the onboard computing is important, is integrating the existing GPS technologies, but taking it one step further, which is tying the field activity at a customer site to the customer records for customer service purposes and for accounting purposes. That if you can not just know where the truck has been, but the activity the truck was involved with and tie it right back into that customer record, now it has value, long-term value, more for reporting purposes and things like that. So that's, that's really the, the major value add other than just uh, GPS tracking. The next trend I'd, I'd share with you would be one on um, the immediate trans, uh, transmission of the data back to the office. Uh, it used to be, again, that remember the route sheets and the driver fills them out and he gets back into the yard at the end of the night um, so the data gets, at the end of the night, gets sent back to the office. Their data entry happens, and then that happens maybe another day or two later, and then maybe two or three days later, 
you've got information about that customer activity and maybe some reports from it, maybe. Uh, that's no longer acceptable. When you're in a competitive environment and you need real-time data and you've got real-time customers on the phone wanting to know why it wasn't my can picked up today or you know, what's going on, you need to have real-time uh, uh, transmission of data. So your customer service reps and your dispatchers that are getting work orders in from the day are more productive and they're dealing in real time. And again, monitoring the activities of that truck on a minute by minute slice and the driver activity, whether he's speeding, excessive braking, excessive acceleration, uh, gone too long in his brakes or whatever, you have 100% visibility on that driver uh, throughout the day, again, with the real time aspect. So it allows the back office management and the back office personnel to have this kind of war room environment, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, where they can, you know, real-time dispatching on the fly, be working with their trucks and the activity rather than waiting for the next day to get that information. So it's just the velocity of information, the acceleration of that data is very important. RFID technology. Now, a lot of you have heard about this before. You know, they, they track, Walmart's tracked it with their supply chain management. and They, they even track cows from mad cow disease using RFID tags. And there's all kinds of applications in society. But why not track your inventory, your other assets, using RFID? And, and if in areas like, say, San Francisco, you've got really dense populations uh, in the city. And you're not sure whose recycling tub or whose garbage goes to which address and you want to get billing absolutely perfect, the one way to do it is put RFID tags on the recycling tub or your 32 gallon container and tie the tag to your address so you're absolutely sure that you're getting billed for what you're putting out and not what your neighbor is and he's, he's switching the cans around and you're, you're paying more for. So RFID gives us the capability in, in high dense areas like cul-de-sacs and others where there's complete accuracy billing. So it solves a lot of the container issues and stuff that, that happens out there. The next one, again, is photographic proof and scales. Again, back to 100% service verification. If there are problems or issues or anything else at your, at your customer site, why not take a digital picture, store it in the database, and have it available at all times? So it, it provides some add-on uh, opportunities, the billing accuracy, uh, and again, irrefutable proof of service of the activity that took place, and those are tools the drivers just haven't had before in the past. So uh, these are pretty, we see this is actually the, the digital cameras have really caught on hot as a, as a new product offering for us. And then safe driving. So again, uh, the trend is to put the backup cameras, uh, tie it right on to the onboard computer so that the screen becomes your, your, your monitor for the back of the truck. Again, the, the real estate in the cab of the truck is, is so valuable and it's so crowded and there's so much going on uh, that you didn't want to have multiple monitors up there that that driver has to look at. So if you can do it all in one and integrate it, uh, that, that's important. And uh, so visibility is very important. Of course, there's some cost savings perhaps on insurance premiums as well. And then drilling down further on the fleet maintenance modems, again, if you can tie right into the CAN bus uh, and, and get the data from the truck. There's all kinds of things that, that can, can happen that's important. Uh, you can do pre-trip and post-trip inspections uh, of the truck, and what's going on, the activity of the truck, the, kind of the preventative diagnostics. So obviously if the truck's running more effectively, obviously there's fewer carbon emissions, obviously that, that truck is emitting. So keeping, that, keeping the tire pressures monitored, all of that, uh, we, we can record that data for, for management. Uh, secondly, if you can tie into the fuel efficiencies and the miles driven and the carbon emissions that are emitted from that truck so you can reduce the carbon footprint that that truck is emitting in your communities from a sustainability standpoint, pretty important measurement. And so those are the things that we can help uh, proactively manage uh, you know, the maintenance of the fleets. Um, and so uh, we think that, again, the well-maintained trucks equals reduced carbon footprint, and that's becoming more and more important out there. So those are the smart truck uh, applications that, that we're involved with. The second major trend uh, is on the smart back office. So once you've collected the data and you own the data and you bring that data back into the, the back office, uh, 
What's, what's important, and this is just kind of a picture of a, a, a war room environment in New Orleans in a waste hauler down there where they've got uh, dispatchers and customer service reps uh, monitoring uh, the fleet activity. So the trend is around software. And uh, it usually the, the, the basics start with their counting and billing package, obviously. Every company's got to have it. But also the route management software. We call it RMS software. And it, 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 it helps determine the sequence of the route that the driver would go on, oftentimes in, in the most um, optimized or effective way. So the key here is knowing that you have to have these software applications. How can you now integrate other software applications to, to make this even more robust and more cost effective for your operations? So why in your accounting package, why wouldn't you want to tie your payroll system in and around your driver activities? You know, when do they clock in, uh, take breaks, lunches, clock out, and, and the payroll systems involved with it, and the time clock interface? Why wouldn't you want the mapping and geocoding software and applications, and, and we uh, I don't think we have evidence of it, but you know, the, the Google Earth and the applications where you can drill down and see what's going on with your fleet at all time and tie it in uh, to also what's going on with the routes. And then route optimization software. There are companies that have uh, algorithms out there that can help you determine that you want all right turns as part of your fleet. So it's, again, knowing that it takes more fuel for a truck to make a left-hand turn while he's got to wait for oncoming traffic. If you could determine your routes in all right-hand turns, wouldn't that be more safe and fuel efficient in the long run when you're picking up 800 to 1,000 households a day. So, yes? Would this integrate real-time traffic data so they can avoid traffic problems and concerns to further route? There's, there's real growing. We're working on some of that, but there's a real opportunity to tie into ODOT and others so that as traf real-time traffic issues emerge, you could send out alerts or you could send out have the driver be able to see it. So if he wanted to, to route around or whatever, he could. That, that, those are certainly uh, where we're going with some of the applications. Yes, ma'am. It, it might. Um, if I understand your question correctly, it certainly the miles per gallon is a function of how the driver is most likely driving. Is he, is he speeding uh, and the like? But if you could actually reroute things in an optimized way so that, again, there's fewer traffic lights and stops and things like that, obviously that would help uh, with. Or if you could just get him, if you get that route so efficient that he gets his route done an hour earlier in the day, again, you're taking that truck off the road. And that's what it's about. We, we've determined through the use of the technologies that. For every 14, 15 trucks, we can take one truck off the road completely um, uh, through the use of these technologies because the routes are more efficient and uh, they can get through the day so much quicker. So if you can reduce the miles driven, and, and I have an example of how we do that in just a little bit, and, and again, make it safer in a more efficient way to the landfill so it can take more freeway versus residential roads and that type of thing, I think that... Uh, you can reduce your, uh, uh, you can improve your miles per gallon. Systems within mm -hmm. their cars, and so then TriMet, for example, took that same thing, and um, and now instead of getting four miles per gallon, they get about five miles per gallon for a bus, and so. I was just trying to think about that and the optimization of the software and the computer into the vehicle and see if I didn't know whether that could also be optimized to make sure that the miles per gallon are optimized as well. I didn't know what impact those computer systems have on the running of the vehicle. Right. The route, the route optimization software probably is more effective planning of, of the route itself. But having the fleet maintenance modems would allow you to first benchmark which your, which your fuel efficiency is like to start with. And so then as you bring on different technologies or applications, like you just mentioned, like TriMet and others have done, then benchmark how you're improving your fuel efficiency. You can track that and manage to it. Again, if you can measure it, uh, you can manage it. And, and so the technologies allow you to do that. So, yes, ma'am. Do they have an option to have a camera on the 
right side of the vehicle so that you're, if you're making a lot of right turns so that the vehicle does not turn into a bicycle or a pedestrian. Right. Yeah, we can, they can install the cameras on either side of, of the truck itself, right or left side, uh, and or just plug the digital camera directly into a USB port right on the onboard computer so that the, the, literally could just, in the cab of the truck, the driver could click, point and click and take a digital picture. But yeah, they, they can be mounted on the right-hand side of the trucks uh, for that purpose as well. So, yes, ma'am. Have you gotten any feedback from the drivers themselves about these new technologies? And do they feel at all that they're being watched? Yeah, that's an excellent question. Uh, we, we get that a lot, especially in the sales process, um, because a lot of these drivers are union-based. And um, there is a concern that Big Brother's watching because we absolutely do give management absolute 100% visibility <laughs> in what that driver's doing throughout the day. Um, so there is a little bit of that concern. The, the good drivers will love it because now management knows how good they really are and what they're able to accomplish. The ones that are taking bribes on the side for pickups they shouldn't be doing or are taking long breaks or lunches and those things, uh, they either have to clean up their behavior or they end up usually uh, being let go at some point. So it, there is a certain amount of that. Now, after a while, the drivers tend to forget that the technology is even there, and so <laughs> they can slide back in those habits and the like, and it is a management opportunity. But we, we see great productivity improvements on the part of drivers knowing that they're watched and that uh, it, does, it does, again, if, if they're not speeding, or, or if they're being more safe, that's better for our communities all the way around. So um, we can, we know exactly what they're doing uh, at all times, and, uh, and they, they, they do know that. Now, um, some of them really like it because, again, a lot of these drivers are pretty disenfranchised, don't, aren't real familiar with the technologies, and the fact that in their truck they've got an onboard computer when a lot of them don't even know uh, maybe how to use an ATM machine, I think it's pretty cool. And so... Uh, it becomes bragging rights. Their, their trucks have it and others don't. And, and so after a while, we don't see any complaints at all. Uh, it really is long term, they actually like it better. They can get done sooner and it's a lot easier for them, ultimately. Yes, sir. Uh, what's the approximate uh, training time for the drivers to get used to the system? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it varies. Uh, Ed, what would you say? You've been out of training as well. We generally, when we go into a company, we'll spend a good week. Yeah, typically it's one to two weeks. And they, you know, we keep it fairly simple. Uh, the interaction with the onboard computer is not a lot of things that they have to do. So it's all you know, sort of clear, easy to, to understand. So it's not unlike you know, a laptop or you know, a keyboard and, and you have to actually you know, do a lot of things with the mouse. Uh, this is a touch screen. So they only touch the functionality that they need. So it's very simple. It takes them less than a week. You need to get yeah. trained in a, in a few hours. It takes them a week to uh, do the transition from paper to computer alone. That's probably the longest. And usually we start them with both paper and the computer. And as they get more comfortable, then you can take away uh, the paper. And everything is uh, on the computer. But we do a lot of it like kind of the iPhone technologies. It's just touch screen. It's real easy. And, and there's two major buttons, done or skip. So if you've picked it up, you're done. We already have tracked the GPS, so we log that in. Uh, and and, if, and if, if, if you don't have a container out, it, it skips your house. You just hit skip, and it goes on. And so we, we track all that. These days, with the economy the way it is, if people aren't paying their bills, we also can track that and, and put a big red X at, on the address on the onboard computer so the driver knows not to pick up your site if you're not current with your bill. Again, another reason why the technologies can actually help, help the hauler and be more effective and the like. So uh, having that uh, is, is real useful. So the, main, the more, main point up here is that there are software applications, and, but it really needs to be integrated in your back office so that they all speak, the software stack all speaks to each other and not one-off applications that don't integrate. So. Another concept that we've introduced that has some, some interest out there, uh, we've got it in a couple of sites, is the idea of a driver kiosk. So if you were to put a kiosk, say, in the driver uh, break room, and it's really, again, uh, computer-based, and the driver at the end of the shift can come in at the end of the night 
and 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 with his supervisor pull up the day's route, the day's activity, and in real time then go through with a supervisor what worked well, what didn't go well, what problems did he have, uh, uh, and, and go through and do a, a route audit. Uh, you know, real time at the end of the day, a route audit of what, what transpired throughout that day. So, and, and then once you have that and sign off on it right there in the spot, and you've got all of the report activity then verified, and so the goals would be, again, uh, to have an accountable route reporting and reduce the driver in office time because the drivers will get in and they'll linger around and they'll waste an hour or so even before they leave for the day and this gets them in and gets them out a little quicker. But again, it's just another use of, of the technologies for efficiency's sake. The other thing uh, uh, we offer is kind of this workstation, uh, dispatcher workstation. Again, the trend is to improve uh, the efficiencies. So if you've got a construction site, and you need to have a container out there, or you have a Safeway store and you have a container, and you, you, you call in and you, they, they issue up a work order for that day, for that pickup. So that happens. Uh, before, they'd kind of load them up and batch them up and give them the driver the start of the day, and, you'd, and they'd go out and do their activity and come back, and okay, so it's for that day. But again, you didn't have any real-time visibility or activity around that. What the, the, uh, the back office uh, workstation offers up, because that work order comes in throughout the day, it can be logged in and that work order immediately issued and you can put geofencing, so you could draw a circle around the map and assign all the work orders to the truck that's out there already closest to that site, assign the work orders, they do the pickups, and it's real-time dispatching on the fly. So again, you're reducing miles driven because the driver doesn't have to go out and do it and then come back in, get the next work order, and then go back out. He can literally, you know, take care of the work orders that are closest around there as a more efficient way of dispatching. And again, it can get more pickups per day uh, equals more revenue. And again, it integrates with a route optimization software. So again, more effective driving patterns and, and uh, use of freeways and the like. And it's a way to, to again, get more done very quickly with high visibility in the back office personnel with the drivers. So, yes, ma'am. Um, is your company the one that's developing all this software, or are you just kind of coming the final products? Combination of both. Uh, we, we have the software that goes in the, in the back office servers, the database and, all, and the reporting I'm going to go through in a minute. So we do that. We do the software on the onboard computer, too, on the truck. Uh, but we also partner with other software companies to bring these applications in and make sure they are integrated, as we just talked about. For instance, the route optimization software, that's not something, we don't have PhD level guys doing all the algorithms on that stuff, but we can partner with companies that offer it and make it integrate to our software so it's seamless. So we do a combination of both. Um, but this particular, uh, the mapping piece we contract with, but the, the work orders up here uh, that are listed here, actually Ed and, and our software developers in Beaverton have developed out those applications. So that was uh, the software side. The third major trend I would share with you is around communications. Excuse me, was it, I'm sorry, go ahead. Do these work orders, do they automatically, will they update an optimized route for the trucker as the work orders come in? So will they have a different changing route on the daily basis? Or as the work orders come in, the dispatchers actually uh, load the work orders and the address and can pull them up on the screen and then dispatch them uh, effectively. And you can probably go into more detail about that, but on the geofencing and, and the activity around that. But yeah, the dispatcher still has a role. <laughs> yeah, so the dispatcher uh, still has a role to play, uh, but he has all the information uh, in front of him uh, on the map and on the, the dashboard, you know, with the red and green, and he does dynamic dispatching. Uh, so he sees, you know, who is done, who is almost done, and he can send additional work uh, for the truck. So it is real time. I would yes, assume that this dispatcher workstation also deals with things like what if you have a truck break down and Absolutely. you need another one to take over a route or if for some reason a route's running 
slow today? If somebody else is done, can you reroute them to finish it up? Absolutely. And one of the things that our software uh, provides is um, we can track, and, w and we're developing customer portals now, but we can track where the driver is during his route through the day and how, what percentage he's done versus the, the planned route. So we can see if he's behind or not, if he's running into extra traffic or something else like that he's behind. Uh, but we can bring helper trucks in and give them additional help and, and actually reverse engineer it so we can have the helper truck <coughs> run the back of his route and, and, and go backwards with it and meet in the middle so that we can get it done. Because the waste hauler, if you think about it, needs to pick up 100% of the waste 100% of the time. Because if he doesn't do it, guess what? It's there the next day. So now he's got 100% of his waste that needs to be picked up the next day, plus what he didn't pick up the previous day. So he's got to make sure everything gets picked up. So helper routes are a possibility. These trucks break down, uh, uh, you know, oftentimes, unfortunately. And so we can, we can reassign other drivers that get done early or other trucks to come in and finish out his route. And we can display his route on the other computers. We can dynamically move his route to those other trucks and let him take over. So it's part of the load balancing that can take place then for a hauler. Now, great question. So again, uh, communication is key. Again, we talked about the old world where it was Everything was kind of batch processed, and you start the day out, and the data gets done a day or two later or whatever. Again, that's not acceptable. What, what, what customers want, what the haulers want, is again, is real-time connectivity, and there's different ways to do that. Certainly, there's the old uh, Wi-Fi in the yard where when the truck drives in at the night, all the data of the day gets uploaded, and, and, and uh, they using Cisco technology and the like, and that's pretty prevalent. But... What we see now is a lot of use for cell. Now that cell coverage is so ubiquitous throughout the country and the prices have come down, uh, those cell plans, we're, that's, we're almost installing 100% cell coverage now at this point. But there are places where, again, cell coverage doesn't reach, and so we can offer low-orbit satellites in real remote areas where uh, you know, the canyons and the Rockies where there are home sites and you can't get to it, or the canyons in New York City where... You can't get communications into it. There, there are ways still to get uh, those, those trucks uh, communicate with. And at worst case, a lot of the modems we have will still capture the data when they're out of transmission. But as soon as they come back in within cell tower range, everything uploads. So all the data still gets captured and, and, uh, uh, and registered. So anyway, there's lots of ways now from a communication standpoint to make sure that that truck is tied in with uh, the back office at all times. So now that you've got the hardware on the truck, you've got the back end, back office, and you've got the communications to link them, then the higher level area that we want to get to is in strategic reporting. What are you going to do with that data now that you've captured it? Surely there's the operational efficiencies and things you work on. What we want to be able to do is to give a, a, a fleet operator Visibility from the driver behaviors at the lowest levels right up to the CEO and everything in between. So that you've got, from the driver behavior standpoint, the map, and you've got verification. The supervisors have their maps and, and driver locations and visibility on activity. Operations management, you have management alerts and accounting and billing activity and things going on. And then you've got summer reports for uh, the executive management. And so um, this visibility provides um, uh, a lot of opportunity for management. So again, the trend is C, we call C-level dashboards. So just like the dashboard, on a, you're, you're a pilot of a plane, you've got the dashboards. You, you'd be able to fly the plane just through the instruments alone. Same thing with management. If they can see the dial, see the graph, see the charts, and, and Visibility real time on their, their two biggest assets, their drivers and their trucks, uh, that's important. And again, it's also creating both internal and external reports. So the internal reports for management is certainly important. But to your point earlier about reporting some of this information to ODOT or DEQ or others, uh, there could be tax, uh, tax reporting, you know, miles driven, their fuel taxes, crossing state lines. There's all kinds of compliance issues the governmental agencies will require a lot of those reports can be um, can be uh, derived and reported based on that. So, 
The key thing is accountability to management and visibility and productivity for revenue growth and bottom line profits. So we're, we're developing, like I mentioned before, customer-based portals where management and others can dial right in and we give them secure access and they can see the dials of their company against corporate metrics about what's going on uh, <laughs> real time. So any questions on that before I move on? Go ahead, sir. What kind of efficiencies, or um, maybe on a percentage basis, what kind of efficiencies or, uh, or cost savings on a percentage basis are some of these companies starting to see with, with you know, the realization of implementing, implementing the system? Well, it's a good, good question. What we're really focusing now, because of the tough economic times, is on ROI, return on investment, because there's no point in buying this technology if it doesn't give you a return. And so, you know, we, we have a lot of different metrics and things that we measure. We think a payback period of 6 to 12 months on, on technology like that is very reasonable. But it's, but it's a combination of things. It's, it's efficiency in the back office. It's a reduction of maintenance costs and fuel costs and things like that in the truck. It's extra revenues gained by, you know, extra pickups and the like. It's uh, reduced fuel costs because of, again, route optimization. It's a lot of things that go in to that, but, but really just giving management the, the, the data and the reports that allow them to, to manage more effectively. Maybe it's taking trucks off the road, it's, it's driver time activity, uh, it's extra pickups that get done, there's a lot of things that go into it, and so, so there's a real return on investment that, that will pay for it. And, and, then, and then safety, uh, safety's improved, which reduces their insurance premiums and the liability issues around that, and, uh, the wear and tear on the trucks, I mean, there's all kinds of gains to be made on it. So I, I, I don't know if I could put it in a percentage, um, but generally speaking, it takes about $94 or $95 per hour to operate a truck. And so if you can reduce those costs uh, by 10% or whatever, it, it becomes a real number when you're spread out over 156,000 trucks if we could ever get to that point. So uh, excellent question. Uh, numbers. Uh, in a lot of the cases, we have seen a reduction in route time, you know, 30 minutes uh, reduction, 30 to even longer, which could translate into, you know, less miles, you know, uh, 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 driven, you know, short uh, amount of time, or consolidating few trucks, uh, because now your routes are taking less time. You can, uh, you know, have the same truck do more work uh, and reduce the number of vehicles uh, on the road. Yeah, very good. So, so we've talked about the four trends that we're seeing now overall, but where's the technology going? So this is 2008-2009 time frame. Uh, we talked about today smart trucks, smart office, real-time communication, strategic management reporting. These are current technologies. Uh, in 2009, we talked about consumerization. Instant messaging, you know, instant messaging with the drivers themselves and sending messages in the truck uh, without having cell phones or other unsafe ways. Uh, this is possible. The video rather than just digital pictures, mobile devices, and the whole sustainability trend that we're seeing in 09. Technology is offering that. When we talk about going from, really, the, the technology is going from the high school to the hauler because that's where the trends are in, in technology. So. Uh, Facebook and Twitter and all those things that are happening, they'll, they'll find their way into the industry before long. We think by 2010, because we're already working on some of these things, things like interactive uh, web activity, certainly a consumer to company portal and consumer to consumer portals are possibilities as well. So the whole social networking theme can be entered into it. So on the consumer company portal, the, the, a waste hauler could literally have on his site, uh, as, as a homeowner, you could dial in or commercial, you could dial in, find out when your recycling is or the activity or your billing activity and, and having port, interactive portals that way. But the chance to provide in, in, increased customer satisfaction to the industry doing uh, maybe even, who knows, other activities like a concierge service that your waste hauler could literally provide other levels of service as well out there are possible. It's just using the whole social networking concept in ways that aren't imagined today. Again, the utility, PGE and others offer some of those things and so 
this is a possibility as well. So there's, uh, uh, you know, technology trends on that. So to conclude, uh, we got, uh, we're running out of time. We've got a little, just a quick minute, three minute video. I think it'll tie this together. We think that the early adoption of these technologies give companies a competitive advantage in the marketplace. Uh, has gone from uh, the early adopter to early majority, and we've crossed that technology chasm. And the, and the industry is moving mainstream use of the mobile technologies. The large public haulers are certainly, with their big IT staffs, are going here. Uh, we think that we can offer it to the, the uh, mom and pops as well. Integration is now an expected feature, particularly with software. The price points for the hardware obviously have come down, um, thanks to Moore's Law and a <laughs> few things. So that helps. And then the focus on improving customer satisfaction and retention is certainly part of that. So the final thing to say is the technology becomes the competitive necessity to compete and survive uh, is, is really what we see out there and uh, more of a growing trend. So, uh, yes, sir? Before we go to video, just a fast question. Okay. Uh, it's obvious that this is like apple pie and it's a good thing, right. technology. But I find out that the marketing to the in this area is very complex. Yes. We have had in the past that what what to bring, bring technology to a street maintenance is very tough sell. Right. What is your marketing force and how you how how you market this? Okay, uh, good good question. Uh, marketing is key, and and we've been guilty of because we're technologists of thinking we've got this great technology. You're right. It's a no-brainer. Why wouldn't you go to this technology and trying to sell it that way? Uh, a lot of these operations-based haulers, they're a little afraid of the technology. And so we've probably been too technology-based in the marketing. We're going back now to what's the return on investment? How can it help their operations? Make it simple. High-tech, but with high-touch and the marketing around that. We have a full-time marketing uh, activity going on. We have a direct sales force. We have four or five salespeople nationwide. And we have to, we have to go out, and we're still evangelizing because it's still a little bit on the early adoption stage evangelizing these technologies with the haulers and show them it's possible because they, they, they don't know this even exists. And so we've got to get out in front of it and tell the message. We go to conventions and, and set up booths and try and tell the story, but it's, it's, it's trying to get that story out. And you can't do it on a one-page ad or, or that, those kinds of things very easily. So it's, your point's well taken. It's a very difficult sell in that respect. Yes, sir. Do you also provide uh, technology for the landfills to help optimize between the landfill and the garbage hauler? We don't. Uh, you know, there are companies that do out there, and we integrate with them so that so that's offered. But uh, outside of just tracking the truck right through the landfill, how long did they take to get through the landfill and back out? Because oftentimes they'll do part of the route, go to the landfill, un unload, and then go back out. So how can you improve that time? frame and manage that. We do offer that, but, but the technologies at the landfill itself, that's the scales integration, some of that we, we interface with it, but that's a, that's a different technology. So, we we'll start the video. Yes, yes, Dick. follow up question in the same direction. Uh, there is a third partner in this, which is sort of the public interest. Right. And there's some correlation between where you pick up and what might be high risk loads or, or a site that's known for bad behavior and terrible what they dispose of. Do you have, or is there a possibility of any kind of a public interest module that would flag the inspection or behavior? Yeah, that's interesting. The is there, is, are there databases available uh, that are public knowledge that could that could be accessed then into to knowing where those sites would be? Um, it's kind of like traffic reports. If you knew, if you could tie into ODOT, whether you could provide it. If there's a, if there's databases around that, we could tie into it. You know, there, there are repeat offenders. Right. And some of those have had multiple DEQ citations and so forth. And so you could certainly envision, you know, something that ties to any pickup from certain sites. Yeah, that's interesting. Would trigger a flag. That's interesting. If, if there was a way to get access to that, we could certainly put it in the database because we load the routes at the start of the day with all the addresses built into it. And so you could, just like you flag whether somebody's paid their bill or not, you could flag whether it was a designated site or not of concern. And with the digital pictures and the like, if you saw suspected activity, again, take that picture and, and have it available for the records and, and, and do that. So that's, I hadn't thought of that, but yeah, you could, 
we could certainly tie into it. Any public database like that, we could tie into and leverage. So this is a three-minute video. It's just this is done at Hillsborough Disposal, which is a, a customer of ours, and it brings some of these technologies and the way we offer it, uh, probably a little more real fashion. So you got it loaded, Ed. Dramatically improved customer Oops. service and just increased a radio. Just, just a minute, I guess. So I think I'm going to do my little wrap up, and then those of you who can stay can stay for the video. But I, I want us all to thank the speaker, but want to mention to you that we do this every week. We've been doing it uh, for uh, the last eight years, every Friday. Next Friday is private sector role for reducing auto travel, motives for innovation, and that will be presented by Tom Brennan from Nelson Nygaard. So let's thank our speaker, and then we can watch the video. Yeah, thank you very much, Tom. All right, good. Ed, go ahead, and we'll play this, and we can answer any more questions you might have. We can stay for as long as you want. Automated service verification. This groundbreaking new routeware technology is reshaping the waste industry by automatically managing both customer pickup and landfill transactions. The result? dramatically improved customer service and increased revenues. The Routeware DMS 5000 leverages an in-vehicle GIS mapping system that makes it a snap for the driver to track routes 